Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's all get settled and get in our chairs. I'm looking forward to what God's going to do to the do tonight. Amen. 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 Psalms 150 and 6 said, Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. How many of you are breathing tonight? How many of you are going to praise him tonight? How many of you got something to praise him for? Is he being good to you tonight? Amen, amen. He has, he has been good to me. We want to go to the Lord in prayer right now. If you have a need, just make it known by the raising of your hand. God knows all things, sees all things. Let's just take these needs before him tonight. Lord, we love you. God, we ask you, Lord, that you have your way, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you meet these needs, Lord, according to your will. God, we know that you are healed. God, you took those stripes for our healing, God, and we claim it in your name. Through the authority of the name of Jesus, we claim it tonight. God, whatever the situation is, whatever, whatever, whatever anybody's dealing with tonight, God, you have it under control. Sometimes we can't always see, Lord, but you know the end from the beginning. Lord, we believe. We believe, God. We release faith. Would somebody release faith with me tonight? Lord, we believe, God. Lord, we release faith in this place tonight. Lord, know it, God, that you're going to do all things. God, you're going to have your way, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, to be with us. Give me my hand clap of praise. Come on. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Brother Gio and Sister Amanda have gone on vacation. We've got a bunch gone to NAYC, but God's still in the house. God's still in the house. We're still here. Amen. I'm going to worship him. It doesn't matter what or who is here, I'm going to worship him. I thought about the ten lepers before church started, and the Bible says that God cleansed all of them. They were all cleansed, and as they made their way, he told me, he said, go show yourself to the priest. And as they made their way to the priest, there was one that looked down and realized, Brother Marcus, that something has happened. Something's changed. Something's, something's taken place in my life. There's been a, there's been a, a, a healing take place. And he went back, and the Bible says, I just noticed it when I read it earlier. It says, the man being a Samaritan. Now, we know the connection between a Samaritan and the Jews. This man had no right, really, but God had, had cleansed him. And it said that he fell down at his feet and he worshiped God. And the Lord asked him, he said, where are the, where are the nine? When, did, not, did not heal ten? Where are the nine? Couldn't be found. Nowhere. And it says, as he arose, Brother Cody, and he began to make his way to the priest. He looked down and he'd been made whole. Not only, not only was he cleansed, not only was the leprosy gone from his body, he was restored. What that leprosy had ate away, the tips of the fingers, the nose, the ears, whatever it had taken away from him, he was healed. He was restored. It was put back to him. But because he chose to praise the Lord. Because he chose to praise the Lord. Think about what a difference it will make in your life. What a difference it'll make in my life. And not only that, what a difference it'll make in your neighbor's life right. sitting next to you. What, what a difference it'll make in your family. Right. When we give the Lord just a little bit of praise. We begin to lift him up and we begin to magnify him. Because he alone is worthy. Every day I find that to be true. He alone is worthy. We want to take up the offering at this time. Have Heidi put the prayer on the board, the ways to give. There's Giveify, uh, PayPal, uh, there's cash and checks can be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals, P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. Text to give 833-883-9311. So many different ways to give. So many different opportunities that are open to us to take advantage of. Will you repeat this prayer after me? Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I'm a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, Interest, income, rebates and return, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance. Walking in divine favor and blessing, I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Ties on the inside, offering on the outside. Oh, we got to
be seated. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. A paper from this past week has a couple little quotes that I'd like to read. You know, we're all in ministry. Every, every single one of us is in ministry of some sort. Brother Ronnie was sharing with me. They had, what would you say, 40 at Parma, almost 40 at Parma last night. Uh, thank God. Amen. God, God is definitely moving, but it says ministry. We're not in it for the income. We're in it for the outcome. What takes place, what happens, the outcome of what God's going to do. It's not what I'm going to do. It's not what we're going to do. It's what he's going to do through us. Yes. Brother Shannon, you're seeing that in your own life. It says we will never change the world by going to church. But we will only change the world by being the church. Yes. You know, the Bible talks that we're living epistles known and read of all men. What they see in us how we act or how we conduct ourselves or what we say, it makes a big difference to the world, to those that are out there that are watching us. And believe me, yeah. hey, let me tell you something. They're watching you. They're watching you. They've seen, they've seen changes take place in your life. And they're watching us. And the Lord demonstrated this itself. The true character of ministry is a servant's heart. To be, able to, to be able to serve, to be able to serve others. It's not about me, but it's about him. It's not about me, but it's about him. Well, Eric, it's good to see you tonight. Sister Crystal, we're glad you're home. I missed anybody. It's so good to see everybody that is here tonight. So thankful for everybody that's here tonight. We have got a guest speaker tonight, and I'm looking forward to hearing him. Hearing him tonight, we're going to ask Brother Christian to come and deliver to what God's got on his heart. Make him feel welcome. Come on, Brother Christian. Amen. Amen, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There's no place I'd rather be on a Wednesday night than in the presence of God. No place. Amen. I'll be reading from Proverbs chapter 14 and 12 this evening. If you have your Bibles, if you turn with me. I give honor to you, Brother Gio. I know you'll probably look back at this service. I give honor for you. I give honor to you for asking me to speak here this evening. I, I don't take it lightly by any means. If you, ha if you found it, please say amen. 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 It says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. I want to preach to you for just a few moments this evening on this subject. There is only one way. 
There is only one way. Brother David, would you please pray over this service? You may be seated. In March of 1969, a famous songwriter by the name of Paul Anik wrote a song for the well-known artist Frank Sinatra to record and release called My Way. He penned the lyrics, and now the end is here, and so I face that final curtain. My friend, I'll make it clear. I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I traveled each and every highway, and more, much more, I did it. I did it my way. Yeah. Regrets, I have had a few, but then, again, too much to mention. I did what I had to do. I saw it through without exemption. I planned each chartered course, each careful step along the byway, and more, much more, I did it. I did it my way. Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew when I bit off more than I could chew. But through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up and spit it out. I faced all, I faced it all, and I stood tall and did it my way. For what is a man? What has he got? If not himself, then he has not. Not to say the things that he truly feels and not the words of someone who kneels. Let the record show I took all the blows and I did it my way. You see, this song reportedly sold 2,135,000 copies. It would later become America's anthem of self-determination. They say that the song represents the quintessential American outlook that nothing in life matters more than living on your own terms. We live in a society today that tells us that if it feels good, then it must be right. That you can live however you want and that you can live and do life your way. They say you can dress however you want, talk however you want, look at whatever you want, go wherever you want, date whoever you want, and do whatever you want. But can I tell you, that's the furthest thing from the truth. The world's way and God's ways are completely different. While the world is pushing you to live however you want and go your own way, God has called you to stand firm upon His Word in these end times and go His way. God did not intend for you to live on your own terms. Because of our own fleshly ways, they lead to death. We've got to understand that it's not about what we want. We've not, we're not living to fulfill our own desire, but we're living to please Jesus. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. God has called us to be separate. He's, intended, he's not intended for us to blend into this world. We can't live like the world and change it. But there's got to be a separation that takes place. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. We are a peculiar people. We're not supposed to blend in. He's called you to stand out. He's called you to be holy because He's holy. Living for God the right way doesn't always make sense to others. There's going to be people that will question you they won't understand why you do this and why you do that. But it's because it's not your way, it's God's way. Many mighty men and women of the Bible were questioned by others. Noah built an ark when it had never rained. David killed a giant with a slingshot. Mary poured expensive perfume on the feet of Jesus. Joshua and Caleb were ready to possess the land while others thought they were grasshoppers compared to giants. But these men and women weren't in their own way because their way would have never worked. There is only one way that works. It worked back then and it works today and that way is Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our carnal thinking and ways have got to die. 
so we can go the right way. John 14 and 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the only way. You ask preacher, what way is Jesus' way? When you're born again of the water and the Spirit, begin to earnestly seek after Him, He'll make His way clear to you. He'll begin to reveal things to you that you never understood or thought were important because His way is pure, His way is holy, and His way is life. We can't allow ourselves to get caught up in what we want and go in our own way and lose out. The devil wants to try and make your own way look right. He'll make you think you have life figured out. But don't go that way. It's a trick that leads to eternal torment. Hallelujah. I want to let you know tonight that if you go any other way than God's way, you will never walk in fulfillment of what He has for you. Your life will never be complete. Hallelujah. Your own way may feel great, but I want to remind you that the pleasure is a sinner only for a season, and then you become a slave. You only get one chance to serve God right. So no matter what it takes, we've got to go His way. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God's way is perfect. He loves you and He wants to save you from death. Don't get caught up in what you want and miss out on what He has for you. Because what God has for you and wants to do through you is far greater than anything you could ever accomplish on your own. You can't do it on your own church. You can't go on your own way. Our way doesn't work. Our way will never work. It's got to be His way. It's got to be His way. So we can't afford to waste away the plan of God for our lives, but we must walk in favor with Him that no matter what it takes, uh, we have got to please Him. We've got to stop worrying about what people think about us and get so enthralled in wanting to please God and go His way. We can't worry about what this world thinks about us. Uh, We've been called out already. We've been called to be separate. We've been called to be holy. We can't, we can't allow their perspectives and everything. We can't allow that to get into our ear. We can't allow them to talk into our ear because then it, it'll get us out of the path of, of where God's got us. He, we're supposed to be over here, but, but we're listening to people around us and we're over here whenever we should be listening to God the whole time. We've got to listen to Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if we don't, Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 and 14 says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. And I'm coming to a close, musicians, you can come. Everybody, you can stand if you would like, if you're able to. There's some people that will choose to go their own way because they believe it's the right way. And that's the broad way. The wide gate that leads to destruction. But I've come to tell you, you don't have to go the broad way that leads to destruction. You can go God's way It's the narrow path that few find. It may not always look as appealing. It may not always be as fun. But it's the way. It's the right way. It's the only way. Hallelujah. So we've got to make up in our hearts and our minds tonight. I'm not going my way. But I'm going God's way. We've got to get it down in we've got to get it down into us. That we're not backing down, that we're not giving into society of what they're saying and what they're doing. We've got to go God's way. I want to open these altars tonight for anybody that would like to come and pray.
this evening. We've, we've got to go God's way. If you've got out of alignment a little bit, you can get realigned tonight. You can get realigned tonight with God. Hallelujah. Jesus. So 
Lord. Thank you, Brother Christian. Thank you. Awesome, awesome word. I thought as he was preaching about doing it our way, doing it my way, uh, I know I've shared this with you before, but I just felt impressed that I, that I need to tell it again. It's a testimony that I have. It's something that actually happened in my life. There was I grew up in the Malden Pentecostal Church, born in Malden, raised, raised in a church there. I've actually lived here now longer than I lived there. Sharon and I got married when we were 19, but had a young, young man that moved in. We had a large youth group, and a young man moved in from Michigan, moved in with his, his mother. His, uh, her, her sister went to church there, and uh, Mark and I became good friends, and Mark spent the night at my house, and Mark ate at my dinner table. For the Terrence, we were good friends. I saw Mark slayed in the spirit of the Holy Ghost. I heard Mark give messages in tongues in the Holy Ghost. God used this young man mightily. And uh, long about the age of, I don't know, 17, 18, probably a little bit older because we were already married, but he decided to do things his way. Decided to walk away from God and he walked away from God, and there was a young lady that had a young daughter that went to our church. She'd been born and raised in church, and she walked away. And needless to say, they began to live in together. They began to doing the things of the world. They began to live it like they wanted to live, do their own thing, if you will. And Sharon and I were already married, and a uh, radio call went out, a police call went out that, that somebody had been murdered in, in the home. And uh, come to find out, Mark had uh, sent her little girl to the store. And, uh, man, it just even gets to me today after all these years. Mark sent a little girl to the store, and while he was gone, he murdered Sabrina. And, uh, or mur murdered Janet. And uh, the little girl come back, he, he killed her too, but he killed both of them. Walked away from God, wanted to do it his own way. Yeah. I'm talking about something personal for my life. This young man was my friend, and I seen what God had done in his life, but he decided to walk away. 
he's serving two consecutive life terms in Charleston in the maximum security prison because he wanted to do it his way. Thank you. Thank you for the word. We've got to take that to heart tonight, folks. We've got to take it to we've got to take it to heart tonight. We can all say, well, that would never happen to me. You don't know what would happen when you walk away from God. When you get out from under the blanket of security or blanket of protection that he provides. You never know what's going to happen or what's going to take place. I, I could tell you I could tell you a couple more stories of, of young men that I grew up with that decided to do the same thing. One of my, one of my good buddies, he, there was messages gone forth night after night, and we knew that it was reaching for this young man. But yet he would never make that choice. His brother lived for God, but he would never make that choice. And January 31st, 1980, he had a bad car wreck that killed him, took him out into eternity. Just graduated high school. So we never know, folks. We're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised that. So thank you, Brother Christian. Will you stand with us tonight? Praise God. So thankful for everybody's here. So thankful for the word that we heard tonight. So thankful what God's going to do. Sunday morning, we got elements class at 10 o'clock. We got Sunday school at 11 o'clock. want everybody to be here. Brother Terrence, would you dismiss us in prayer tonight, brother? It is focus prayer this Saturday. The sign-up sheet's in the back, and it'll be from 6 o'clock to 6 o'clock the way it runs. So, yes, Brother Josh, thank you for reminding me about that right there. Anything else that I missed? Any, any Sister Maria? Would anyone like to come along with cooking team for Parma? Cooking team for Parma. Over here, I'll send you back and forth. Okay. 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 All right. So there is a sheet in the back to sign up for cooking for recovery. No matter if it's Parma or here, she said she would work the schedule around. So, all right. Y'all be careful. We'll see you Sunday morning.